In the previous video, we looked at the concept of ratios. And the reason we use ratios is so we can compare different size companies. Here I want to just briefly go over some of the different ratios you can use to analyze a company's performance. And we generally break up the analysis into six different types of ratios. Short-term short solvency or liquidity, which measures and a firm's ability to make it short, meet its short-term obligations. You know, can it make payroll? Can it pay its suppliers? Can it pay its taxes? Can it pay those things that will come due within the year? And if you look at the first um, ratio we have here, the current ratio is just current assets divided by current liabilities. And this ratio, current assets being cash, accounts receivable, and inventories, things that get turned into cash within the year. We also have current liabilities, payments that we have to make within the year, wages payable, um, taxes payable, accounts payable, etc. So you want to see a number certainly that's greater than one, and a lot of times you hear the rule that a number like two is a good number. Um, another ratio we use for short-term solvency is something referred to as the quick ratio. What we do is we just subtract out inventory and we do that because inventory depreciates rather quickly. Okay? It loses its value. Think about a company that, that um, sells produce. You know, Lettuce doesn't sit around very long. You may have a whole warehouse full of lettuce, but if you don't sell it in a few days, it's worthless. Same is true with computers. Okay? Computers become obsolete rather quickly. Okay? Um, sometimes we're interested in not the short-term liquidity, but the long-term solvency of a company. How much debt does it have relative to its equity? Borrowing is okay, but if you borrow too much money, you may have trouble making, meeting your obligations. So we have ratios like the debt ratio, which is total assets minus total equity divided by total assets. That's just total liabilities divided by total assets. Okay. The most common one you see is the debt equity ratio, total debt divided by total equity. A ratio of one means that the firm is using the same amount of debt as equity. A ratio of one half means that it's that it has twice as much equity as it has debt. Okay, twice as much uh, is financed by stockholders as it is by bondholders. A debt equity ratio of two means you're using twice as much debt as equity. Uh, a common one, one that we look at sometimes is something called times interest earn. It's EBIT divided by interest. Earnings before interest and taxes divided by interest. It tells you how much the firm is earning over the amount of interest payments it has. So if a company that is, um, that is in good shape financially will oftentimes have an EBIT of you know, 100, 200. They're earning way more than the amount of interest they're paying. The third category we look at is something called added asset utilization or turnover ratios. Sometimes we refer to these as um, efficiency ratios. How good a job does the firm do of moving its inventory? Okay, Inventory turnover, defined as cost of goods sold divided by inventory, tells us how many times you fill up the warehouse and empty it out. So inventory turnover of one means you fill up the warehouse and it takes you essentially a whole year to empty it out and you never refill anything. Inventory turnover of two means you do that twice. You fill it up, you empty it out, you fill it up again, you empty it out. A better one or perhaps an easier one to think of is days sales in inventory. You take 365 days, that's how many days in a year. You divide it by inventory turnover and that tells you how many days inventory is sitting in your warehouse. Okay, So if you had inventory turnover of one, it's sitting there for 365 days. If you had inventory turnover of two, it's sitting there for about six months, or around 180, 182 days. Okay? You can also look at receivables turnover. How quickly is your money coming in? How long do you have to wait to get paid? Um, again, just like inventory turnover and days sales and in inventory, you have days sales and in receivables. 
this is probably a little bit better. You get paid every, does it take you about 30 days to get your money? Does it take you 60 days, 90 days, okay, et cetera. Um, a common one we look at is something referred to as total asset turnover. Total asset turnover measures how good a job the firm does of using its assets to generate sales. So a big number here means that they're, using, they're doing a good job of using their assets to generate sales. Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, was famous for the fact that he put all his money into his stores and not into his headquarters. In the early years, Walmart's headquarters was a room above uh, their warehouse, you know, using folding chairs because Sam knew that people don't shop, shop in his stores because he has a nice office and a nice desk. They shop in his store because he has, you know, good lighting, he has good shelving, he has, he's able to check out people quickly. That's why people shop in your stores. The stores are stocked well, so he maintains his inventory well. So he put his money into, into things that would help sell products. In fact, I read somewhere that the computer system that Walmart uses to manage its inventories is more sophisticated than the Pentagon's. So think about that. What, what's protecting our country isn't as sophisticated as what's getting the Tide detergent on the Walmart shelves. Um, the fourth category, profitability ratios, tell us how, you know, how much is the company earning on its sales. Profit margin, net income divided by sales. Net income is sort of the last line on the income statement. You take sales, you subtract out all the expenses, the taxes, etc. That's your net income. You can sell a lot of stuff, but you might have a very low profit margin because you're selling at a very low price, and you're not, or you have very high expenses. So this is something we're interested in. Return on assets. Again, how much net income a firm has isn't as important as its return on its assets or its return on its equity. You can have a large company like Home Depot, has a lot of net income, but they also have a huge number of assets. So a small mom and pop hardware store may actually be more profitable. Um, down here, they actually break up return on equity into what's referred to as DuPont analysis. It's broken up into profit margin, um, total asset turnover, and the equity multiplier, the amount of leverage. And in a separate tutorial, I will show you how this breaks down and we'll actually look at a company and analyze their return on equity based on these components. And the last category of ratios we like to look at are market value ratios. These tell us whether we're paying a fair price for the stock. You shouldn't just look at the price of a stock. You should look at its price relative to what you're getting. And what are you getting? You're getting earnings. So the price-earnings ratio is a very common measure. It's just like going to the store and buying a package of ground beef. You might only pay $6 for that package, but how much do you get? Do you get one pound of ground beef? In which case you're paying $6 a pound. Do you get four pounds of ground beef? Do you get six pounds of ground beef? Okay, that's what we're interested in. So just because you pay more dollar-wise doesn't mean it's more expensive. If you pay twice as much for that package, but you get three times as much ground beef, it's actually cheaper. Okay? There are also other measures like price to sales. This was popular especially in the um, late 90s, early 2000 with these internet companies that didn't have any earnings. So analysts had to figure out somewhere, uh, another method for determining whether they were fairly priced or not. And people also look at things like market value to book value, and you can create your own ratios. So in the next tutorial, we'll actually look at some real numbers and try and understand what these things mean.